Hi, everyone. Welcome to Gruff Talk, where each week we explore how to feel better, look better, live better, and age better. One of my favorite mantras is, we can't control getting older, but we can control how we do it. In fact, I sign out of each episode of Gruff Talk saying that because I really, really believe it. And this idea can be applied to just about anything, including how to keep our brains sharp. And keeping our brains sharp is what we're talking about today. I'm your host, Barbara Hannah Grufferman. Okay, confession time. My absolute biggest fear is losing my memory. Little things can trigger the worry. Like the time I took our dog Pete for a walk. It was a beautiful day in New York City. I had on my headphones chatting with one of my daughters about a movie or a book. I got back into the apartment, shut the door and grabbed a piece of dark chocolate from the fridge. Yeah, it's really good for brain health, by the way. And then it hit me. Where was Pete? For just a brief second, a flash of panic. My heart pounded. I ran to the door and there he was. He's so cute, waiting patiently on the hallway, wagging his little tail. Pete cheerfully pranced into the apartment and I gave him the treat he knew was absolutely coming. But I wasn't completely happy. On a gut level, I wondered, why did I lose track of my dog? How did I leave him outside? Was this normal? Or could it be a warning sign that my mind was starting to slip? I'm sure you have your own stories. Millions of people worry about this. When they forget the name of an actor or actress, where's the car parked? Where did you put your glasses or the keys? You know what I'm talking about. In fact, adults are more worried about Alzheimer's than about heart disease or stroke. And it's not just older adults. A recent Harris poll showed that 72% of millennials said they worry about losing their memory when they get older. As I've learned more about brain health, I realized that my little lapse with Pete was perfectly normal. As I started doing some research for a talk I was giving not too long ago, a lot of which ended up going into a chapter on brain health in my last book, but how to stay sharp for life, it became really clear to me that the small steps we all can and should be doing aren't really all that hard or complicated. I've taken a lot of the information I gathered together for that talk and that chapter and have distilled it into what I call the seven small steps to a better brain, which I want to share with you today. The brain is amazing in so many ways. It demands more energy than any other organ in the body. It has a hundred billion neurons that send and receive impulses controlling everything we do. It can rewire itself and modify its structure when it has to, like if it's been, you know, traumatized by a hit or an accident. And it has an elastic quality that scientists call brain or neuroplasticity. It's true that we lose a bit of the short-term memory as we get older, like when a word is stuck at the tip of our tongue and you just can't get it out. But usually it's nothing to worry about. And In certain ways, our brains actually get better over the years. We can recognize patterns better. We make smarter predictions. Our social intelligence and people skills improve dramatically. Vocabulary can improve well into your 70s. I know I'm much better at crossword puzzles now than I used to be, and I can definitely hold my own with Wordle. And you have so much more data floating around in your head compared to when you were younger. Think about it. A neuroscientist recently wrote in the New York Times, it's not that you can't remember. You can. It's just that there is so much more information to sort through. Listen, we've lived, what, 40, 50, 60 or more years already? That's a lot of information to file away. But I do want to highlight something that doesn't get enough attention. More women than men get dementia. Today in the United States, 5.8 million people have Alzheimer's and two thirds of them are women. So here's the big question. What can we do? What does the science say? The answer is that we can do many, many things. Let's start by dispelling a really big myth. Contrary to popular belief, most older people do not end up with dementia, the statistics show. And here's something interesting. Evidence is growing that the risk may be going down 
That's because people who are living longer these days are better educated, which is a big brain booster. And we're seeing signs of this throughout the world, not just in the U.S. But it's really important to get started on those small steps to a better brain now to keep our minds strong later. In fact, many experts say that by taking the right measures, like these small steps we're going to be talking about, we can reduce our risk of serious cognitive impairment by almost, are you ready? 40%. And some experts say it's a lot higher than that. What I'm talking about, simple, practical steps we all can take for a brain healthy lifestyle. And no need to get overwhelmed because, listen to this and let it sink in, what's good for your heart is good for your bones, is good for your weight, for your mood, for your libido, for your overall health and wellness, and yep, good for your brain. Okay, let's get started on the seven small steps to a better brain. Small step number one, stay connected. Number one is to stay engaged with the world, making new social connections and keeping up with all your old ones, working, volunteering, however you choose to do it. Staying engaged with the world is absolutely critical to keeping your brain sharp. Research shows that isolation is bad for you. It actually increases levels of harmful proteins in the brain. We find, for example, that people who spend more time with friends have a 55% lower risk of developing memory problems. So send that text or make that call. And if you're lonely, put yourself in a situation where you can meet new people. Getting together is good for your brain, and the science shows it. Small step number two. Get enough sleep. Living a brain healthy life is a 24 hour commitment, everyone. That's because another incredibly important step is to get a good night's sleep. Sleep is one of the true pillars of overall health, and it doesn't get the credit it deserves. There's a myth that you don't need as much sleep when you get older, but we're learning that this is not true. You need about seven hours every night or a little more. Brain scans show that people who are sleep deprived have higher levels of harmful plaque in their brain. Sleep not only helps protect your brain, but it may even strengthen it. Sleep gives your cells a chance to regenerate. It gives the brain a chance to clear out waste. And deep sleep, specifically with large, slow brain waves, helps the brain stay fit after all that mental work during the day. Here are some do's and don'ts for that restful, healing, soothing sleep we all deserve seven nights a week. Do stick to a schedule. Try to get up at the same time and go to bed at the same time every day of the week. Do make sure your room is quiet, dark, and cool, ideally between 60 and 67 degrees. Sleep on comfy mattress and pillows. The National Sleep Foundation says that these things create the right kind of sleep environment. Do not take long naps, especially late in the day. If you're going to, 30 minutes should be enough. Do get outside during the day and expose yourself to lots of natural light. And if that's not practical and you need to be inside, try to be near as much light as possible. Then at night, try to avoid bright light. This helps manage your body's internal clock for sleep. And when you fall asleep in front of the TV, like my husband often does, that light disrupts the body's natural rhythm. Do not drink caffeine after lunch. I never do. My last cup is like, I don't know, eight o'clock in the morning. Ideally, you should limit any food and drink close to bedtime. Experts say for three hours before bedtime, in fact. Even a healthy snack like high fiber veggies can keep you awake because they take a long time to digest. Now, there are some exceptions. If you want to sip something calming, have a little chamomile tea or warm milk an hour before bed. And do, finally, do pay attention to warning signs of a sleep problem. These can include too much snoring, feeling tired during the day, leg discomfort before sleep, and waking up with a headache or aching jaws. And check it out with your doctor. Small step number three, 
exercise your body. Oh, you knew we were getting to that. <laughs> We've heard forever that exercise is good for us, but the evidence is growing that it's important for our brain health too. Every single workout counts. If you aren't exercising regularly, you need a personal plan. While aerobic exercise like walking, running, and biking are excellent for your brain and great for your body and health and well-being overall, new research shows that adding strength training into the mix will not only help keep your bones strong, and that's super important as we know, but just might be the golden ticket to keeping your brain sharp too. And here's a tip. Don't ease off the weights as you get older. On the contrary, you need to double down. Do everything you can to make yourself stronger. Remember before when I spoke about the elastic quality of our brains, the brain plasticity? Well, here's a little research to back this up. Researchers in Australia found that 20 or so minutes of exercise can really boost the rewiring and neural connections. And researchers in the UK who tracked 150 pairs of twins found that the twin who had stronger legs because of strength training and exercise had a healthier brain 10 years later. A study out of Canada found that women who worked with weights twice a week had less shrinkage in their brains than those who lifted less often or didn't do any strength training at all. But you want to do it all. You want to create a workout program that includes strength training, aerobics, and also balance and flexibility. Because remember, we don't want you to fall. The Global Council on Brain Health recommends that you devote at least 150 minutes a week to this important goal. So, you know, try to weave physical activity into your life. Things like walking, dancing, gardening, and taking the stairs instead of the ele elevator, moving your car further away. Make brain health fun. Pick things you like to do, but keep moving. Small step number four, calm your brain down. One of the best things you'll ever do for your brain is to calm it down and get it centered and focused with deep breathing and maybe a little meditation. I never really paid much attention to meditation until I discovered mindfulness meditation. Something you can do really anywhere, anytime, even while you're like sitting on the train or the bus. If you're feeling anxious during the day, just sit down, shut your eyes, start deep breathing from your belly and calm down. There's a lot of research that says if you supplement physical exercise with yoga or meditation, the payoff in brain health is even bigger. Small step number five, brain food. Yes. If you keep up with your workouts, you're going to have an appetite and the right food will support a strong mind. Healthy diets are linked to more brain tissue, more gray matter, and a large hippocampus, which regulates memory. Some brain healthy foods are vegetables, fruits, fish, and nuts. Not highly processed foods, not a lot of red meat or sugary drinks, trans fats, or refined carbs like white flour. In a brain-healthy diet, you should keep your calorie count moderate and your weight at a healthy level. And you know, the weight thing, it has to be your healthy weight, not your best friend's healthy weight. You're much better off cooking a healthy meal than grabbing fast food. I know it can be tempting to do that, but steer clear and also has so much sodium processed foods. Just a few weeks ago, the journal Neurology reported that people who eat or drink more foods with the antioxidant called flavanol are less likely to develop Alzheimer's than those who do not. It's found in nearly all fruits and vegetables, but also tea. And foods in the study included kale, beans, spinach, broccoli, tomatoes, and pears. And I'm sure you've heard about the Mediterranean style diet, which is so good for your heart. It emphasizes fresh veggies, whole grains, beans, nuts, fish, herbs, and yeah, a little daily glass of red wine, but don't overdo it. Now I want to tell you about a newer diet that is not as well known yet, but you will definitely be hearing more about it in the future. It's called the MIND diet, M-I-N-D. <laughs> 
aptly put, and it was designed to optimize the health of your brain. It's very similar to the Mediterranean diet, but has some big differences. The MIND diet recommends a lot of fruit and specifically berries. And when it comes to vegetables, it also recommends a leafy vegetable every day plus another vegetable. And also puts less emphasis on fish than the Mediterranean diet does. In Love Your Age, my last book, I highlight some of the best brain boosters and I encourage you to use them in your meal planning. Like you want to add in foods that um, have vitamin D because it reduces uh, stroke risk, like beans, spinach, fortified whole grains. Zinc seems to help the brain form memories. You can find that in seafood, meat, spinach, pumpkin seeds, other nuts, beans, and yay, dark chocolate. Vitamin E is an antioxidant that may protect your brain cells. You can get that also in seeds and nuts and oils and also tomatoes. And vitamin K can give you a memory boost, uh, especially in older adults in herbs, leafy or stalky vegetables like broccoli and kale, salad greens, asparagus, leeks, and soybeans. And also omega-3 fatty acids can help improve memory and brain function. You get those in a lot of the seafood like salmon, shrimp, halibut, herring, even oysters, sardines, and fresh tuna. So your mother was right. Fish really are brain food or fish is brain food. <laughs> Blueberries are rich in antioxidants. I never miss a day without having a bowl of blueberries. I mix it into a smoothie, I put it into my yogurt, or just take a handful and eat them like candy. They're one of the best things that you can eat and really, really good for your brain. And dark chocolate, great way to end the day. At the end of your meal, just take a great piece of dark chocolate and try to find dark chocolate that has at least 70% cocoa because that seems to help increase blood flow to the brain and helps encourage the growth of new brain cells. Uh, is this stuff good or what? Yep, pretty darn good. Okay, small step number six, exercise your brain. We talked before about working out your body to help stay sharp. You also need to work out your brain. Try new things, challenge yourself, keep on learning. Just as pushing your body with exercise helps build fresh muscle cells, pushing your mind helps build new brain cells. It sparks more synaptic connections. And all those extra cells and connections don't just make you smarter. They also act as a safety mechanism called a cognitive reserve. That means that if one part of the brain is injured, others may be able to take over its job. Isn't that amazing? I think it's amazing. So it's not a surprise that science is telling us that people with more education and higher skill levels, you know, people who have exercised their brains for many years are more likely to stay sharp when they get older. There are a million things you can do to put your brain to work. I recommend reading as much as possible, especially a book that challenges you. Like, are you ready? A Jane Austen novel. I'm not kidding. Stanford researchers put people in an MRI and found an increased blood flow to the brain when they read excerpts from Jane Austen. Pretty funny. And I also recommend knitting. Studies show that knitting and crocheting have a very positive impact on brain cells, especially if the patterns are a bit challenging. The point is to work out your brain on a regular basis, just like you work out your body. And the possibilities are endless. Take a class, join a club, learn new recipes, pick up a musical instrument, go to a lecture, volunteer for a cause, study a new language, or freshen up on the Spanish or French you learned in high school. And small step number seven, take care of your health. We've been talking about lifestyle choices that help keep your mind strong. Fun things, right? But there's another critical area where you can keep your brain really strong, and that's by keeping your body healthy. A lot of conditions can undermine brain health, such as high blood pressure, heart disease, heart problems, diabetes, sleep apnea, clinical depression, and in many cases, prompt medical care can help. In one study, scientists found that intensive treatment of hypertension reduced the chances of developing problems in memory and thinking. 
Scientists are also looking into inflammation. I've written about that a lot because I find it fascinating. As a cause of dementia, inflammation is a process where our white cells rush in to fight infections and other things that they feel don't belong in our bodies. Now, that can be life-saving, but not when it goes on for too long. And that's really what bad inflammation is. So disease, tobacco, drugs, certain foods, and environmental toxins all have the potential to cause chronic inflammation in the brain. In fact, they're now looking into whether a certain inflammatory marker in the blood can reveal whether someone is at greater risk for Alzheimer's. So the message here is to take care of your overall health. Don't put off seeing your healthcare provider or getting that annual physical. Getting treatment is another little body health thing that you should pay attention to. Getting treatment for hearing loss is another way to help you stay sharp. That connection might sound strange, but researchers at Johns Hopkins really nailed it. They found that people with hearing loss were 24% more likely to end up with Alzheimer's. And the worse the hearing loss, the greater the risk. Why is that? Well, Experts think it's because hearing loss can make you feel isolated and it can force your brain to work harder, but not in a good way. So if you're developing a hearing problem, get it checked out. A really, really good tip too is to remember to brush and floss your teeth. It's not just to fight cavities or keep your breath fresh, although that's really important. Your mouth is an ecosystem and bacteria live there. You don't want the wrong ones getting into your brain and they can. Several studies have linked gum disease to dementia. Oh, I know, I know. So just keep brushing and flossing. So what I've been going over is really about the choices that we make, choices that are in our power every single day. We can control every change in our body or getting older. But we can control a great deal of things that will make a huge difference. If you need inspiration, just think of the people that depend on you. Think of the life experiences you wish to have. Think about all the things you haven't done yet or want to try again. Staying active, learning new things, eating right, eating smart, getting in shape. These are small steps that not only feel good, But bonus, bring happiness. And at the end of the day, isn't that what it's all about? Thanks for tuning in, everyone. If you enjoyed this episode of Rough Talk, please do two things. First, share it with all your friends and family and subscribe to Rough Talk wherever you listen to podcasts, including YouTube, so you never miss a single episode. Until next time, remember this. We can't control getting older, but we can control how we do it. Talk to you soon.